Hello and welcome to Model Train Fund. My name is Bo Jensen and today we're going to look at uh, how do we make a stop section or a stop track when we're using the uh, startup uh, light signals uh, from Merklin uh, together with the uh, M84. So first of all, let's talk about what is a stop section. So the idea is I here got my signal um, if it's green, then I would like the trains to be able to pass. If it's red, I would like the trains to stop. The principle, the basic principle of that is for the center connector here or the center rail uh, on the track, which is the red wire or the B, I will want to give it, I have no power on that one if the signal is, is red. In that way, when the locomotive comes here and it approaches and it hits the stop section or stop track, then it will actually stop because there is no more power. Then when the green uh, or the signal turns green, then I would like to have power here again so that the uh, train uh, will continue. Uh, the trick basically is to use uh, the extra wire here that I haven't used before. So do remember this is a continuation of the beginners episode 5G where we looked at how to basically install uh, the, the Macklin uh, startup light signals. Um, do also remember that I'm showing here how to use it with the uh, uh, Macklin startup block signal, which is the 74391. However, you can do exactly the same if you're using the yard signal. So that's the 74371. Uh, the only difference is to the home block signal, you could put a distance signal in front. Uh, so you could put the distance 74380 in front, but you uh, wouldn't do that in front of a yard signal. Um, finally, I'm showing it here with uh, the, um, the uh, Macklin uh, Black uh, M84, so the 60842. You can do exactly the same thing with the 60841, which is the white M84. Enjoy the video. When we are using the uh, startup uh, block signal uh, with the M84, we can also make a stop track. So what is a stop track? Well, you see the uh, signal is here and basically we would like the uh, train uh, to stop uh, before the signal. How do we do that? Well, basically uh, uh, what we can do is make sure there's no power in uh, the tracks immediately before the signal, uh, whenever the uh, signal is uh, red. And then when it's uh, green, uh, then there will be power in the track. And that's where this um, additional wire here that uh, comes, uh, that's, that's on the plug uh, for the block signal uh, comes in handy. Because this one here, uh, when it's connected to the M84, will give power when it's uh, green. And there will be no power in this when it's red. So what do we need to do? Well, first we uh, disassemble these things. I'm taking the signal off. Uh, this is the track I would like to uh, have uh, no power on, so act as a stop track. We go back to uh, what we found in the, uh, uh, when we opened the packaging, we found these ones here, and you can see there's some red insulators in here. We need to grab the insulators. Okay, there is also some brackets in here. I believe that's for when the signal is on an incline. There is also a screw in here. You see that? We don't need the screw. But what we do need is this little thingy here. This is basically uh, an insulator. So you see this. It's an insulator. How does that work? Well, now we're taking the track here we want as a stop track. Uh, and basically what we want to do is we want to block uh, for the B here. How do we do that? Well, we turn it around and you see there's two uh, connectors here that act as connectors between the track, right? So when we have two tracks we put together, you can see there's two connectors from each side and these actually connect uh, when, uh, when we uh, plug them together. Um, so if we look at these ones here, the one that's directly below the rail is for powering the rail, so that's the brown. The one that is closest to the center here 
is the red, so that's the one powering the red. So in order to insulate, I need to take this little thingy here, and you can see there's a hole in it here. There's a little thingy sticking down. The little thingy sticking down, you basically put down like this, and then you have to wriggle it uh, on here. And as you can see, then it comes on like this. You need to make sure that this one uh, is pointing out. Why is that? Because then when you gently push these together, you see you gently, you have to align them and gently push them together. If we turn them around, you can see the red is sitting here on the tab and it's insulating towards the other track. All right. However, as you see, there's uh, one here on the track. There's also one here on the other track. You see that it has the same thing. One for the rail and the one towards the center is uh, for the power there or the B or the red. So again, we have to put this one on. You see it's here. Uh, there's a hole. There is a little thingy sticking down. The best way to do this is you see, put it on, you put it a little crooked on because then you can maneuver it a little and then you basically just plug it in like this. And now you see both of the tracks have it on both sides. So that means I can plug it in like this. And uh, where did my, here are my, for the other end, remember we have to do it in both ends because I wanna have this entire track here. You see it goes here and then it ends there. I want that entire track as a top stop track. So I also need it in the other end. So we plug it in here as well. Okay. And then we need it, of course, on the track before the stop track as well. And again, notice I always plug it in on the one that's closest to the rail. You have to wriggle it a little to get it to work. And see here, I did something bad. I was a little too violent. So see, now this one is bent. Uh, this is the point where you either go get a new one or you try and gently straighten it out here. And then that means you have to be even more gentle when you're putting these things together. Uh, they have to be able to click together without too much resistance. You can turn them around and see if it works. So if we zoom out here, that means that I have the straight track here. That's the stop track. I have a track after and I have a track before here. So this is the only one I have insulated here. So now what do I do? Well, here comes another little trick. There is actually an extra wire in here. This is where we need the extra wire. Okay. So why do we need the extra wire? Because this is the stop track. If there's no power in that, we would like to be able to bypass the power from here to here, right? Um, what I got here is a little layout with a circle, so it really doesn't matter. This end is connected to the other end ultimately. However, if you had multiple signals, of course, that would be a problem. So I got the red wire here. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that the track here where the signal is, so after the signal, I would like to make sure that power can come from that side to the other side. And you see, this is basically just a spade connector that's put inside an insulator. And you can see uh, the, um, the flat side is to the right for me now. So I need to twist that around and have that towards the bottom. And then I need to put that on. Do remember here, there's a B. It's the one that's closest to the to the track here. So the B, which is the red, which is also the one I have insulated. So that one there, I basically just need to connect that on. Okay. So you see it goes on like this. And then we got here the stop track. And then I want to bypass all the way to the other end. So we have the other end here. We look again here. There is a B. Can you see that? And a zero over here. We look at this one here. You see uh, now I have the, the round thingies to the left, but I need the flat, which is to the right towards the track. So I turn it around like this. So you see now it's like this. I put it down and then I can 
basically plug it on here. So this is exactly like the spade connector. So there's nothing new there. Okay, so now I have the bypass. Now I need to be able to power the stop track when it's green. So that's basically this wire here. Again, this one needs to go on the stop track. It needs to go on the B. So that's the my straight track here, right? So I got insulators here. I got insulators here. I've got a wire that bypasses this track here. And then I want to power my stop track here. I do that uh, on the B here as well. You can see there's a B. And this is the one that comes from the M84. And again, I put the flat side towards the track. And then I got it here. And that means now this is the track before. There's a bypass wire here. It's hard to see that there is, but it goes over here. I hope so. Yeah, see it ends there. And then we got the wire, the red wire that came out of the M84. And you can see that fell out. So that's no good. We try again. We need to make sure it's properly attached. Okay, we try it here. All right. We pull it a little to make sure it's attached. Now we got it here and now we can reattach everything. Yes, we already uh, got a lot of wires. However, we are still missing one because uh, the wire here that goes uh, to the stop track that uh, is supposed to uh, power the track uh, when the signal is green still need power. In order to do that, we need to take our mobile um, our M84 here and uh, you can see the red wire that goes here that goes to the stop track now needs to be powered. We do that by giving the M84 port uh, power as we normally would. would. How was it we did that? Well, we need to give the center one here power. So this one here, uh, what comes in here will be directed to the red uh, when the signal is green. So the center one here, we still need something. So what we can do is we can take a wire. So here I have a red wire with a spade connector. I can connect that one uh, to the track, uh, yet another place. I could also uh, connect it to a power bus. However, I'm going to do it a little differently. I'm just going to take a standard red wire here. Uh, there is a uh, there's nothing at the end. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the power from this one and put it over here to the center. And again, here you see we need a small screwdriver. I got my small screwdriver. I got the center here. I can basically just plug this one in here in the center. Okay, like this. Oh, let me see if I can hold everything. And then we just need to make sure to tighten the screw give it a little choke to make sure it's there and it wasn't so we try again okay so we're just going to put the wire here in the center hole we hold it and then we uh, tighten the screw All right, give it a little chug to make sure it's connected. Then we take the other end of the wire. And of course I could have shortened that a little. I wanna put that in here. We got two wires and I'll twist them together. All right, and then I'll plug it into the power here. And again, Ooh. I need to tighten the screw. Yeah, it's a little difficult here. My wires are not quite long enough. Okay, we give it a little tug. And now we're all set. Let's uh, review the setup. So we got the uh, main block signal here. Uh, we got a matching uh, distance signal over here. The matching distance signal will turn uh, show whether or not the, the uh, next signal is red or green. 
uh, we got them both connected you see using the blue wires here or to the m84 on the first port here so on port one or output one uh, that one has address five you see it's the same thing here for the distance signal so they're both connected there uh, in addition to that we have a stop track here that's basically the uh, straight track so it's basically here from this uh, red here uh, where we insulate it so this track here always has power then we insulated the stop track here all the way over to the signal so you see it stops here we insulated in both ends why did we do that because we want to turn off the power here on this stop track when this signal is red making thereby making the trains stop here on this section here however in order to make sure that we got power both on this side of the stop track and this side of the stop track there's a bypass wire we uh, plugged in here so that if the if the central station or mobile station is uh, plugged in and the power is over here then there will also be power on the other side you don't necessarily need to do a, a bypass here depending on how your layout is it could also be that you have drop wires down to a power bus then you just need to make sure that it's powered on both ends in addition to that we have here uh, um, power so basically the way the stop track works is we turn on and off the power here uh, on the stop track and we do that by giving power to the red hence the center rail here so this one here will give power when the signal is when this signal is green and will not give power when it's red the power comes all the way over here from the connector uh, which means also we have to provide track power to this red wire we do that by going to the central uh, connector on the m84 and giving some power on there so we need to give some red or some b or some power from a center rail in this case i basically just you see there's one over here that goes over to the power for the m84 so i basically just took it uh, from the power of the uh, m84 i could also have connected that center directly to the track now let's see if it works so I've set the signal uh, for green and let me run a train by and then you can see here it just passes the signal uh, because now the signal is green now I set the uh, signal to red and let's see what happens then now a train should stop and you can see the train comes here and as soon as it hits the um, the stop track it will have no more power and then it would stop so now what i can do is i can set the signal to green and then we should see the uh, locomotive start up again and we see that here the signal turns green and the locomotive keeps driving now what do i need to think about uh, with a setup like this well the stop track is only from here till the signal, right? So if there's a locomotive or a train that comes with too much speed, so it will not stop, then what you actually will see is it could actually entirely bypass the stop track. So I'm gonna set the signal to red and I'm gonna give my locomotive full speed. Let's see if it gets up into speed. Here comes the locomotive. You see it stops, but see how far it rolls this time. It rolled a lot further than last time. Let me just give it a green and let's try one more time with full speed because it actually didn't reach entirely full speed. This time it's coming with full speed and you will see, see it actually lost power there on the stop track, but it made it all the way to the other side. You see again, it made it all the way to the other side. So what does this mean? See, now it comes in slower and then it manages to stop. This means you need to make the distance of the stop track far enough so the train will stop and not just glide all the way to the other side this is a heavy locomotive so what happens when there's no power is it will still keep on rolling and in this case here where i had full power it actually made it all the way to the other side so you need to make sure that the length of your stop track is far enough so such that 
it doesn't uh, just roll over. So it could mean that this here is uh, one piece of track, maybe you need two or maybe even three pieces of track depending on your speed. However, the other thing you need to think about here is you want it to stop so it actually looks like it stops in front of the signal. So you need to match the speed with where you think it will stop. You need to test it for all your locomotives. The other thing is here the locomotive actually has a pickup shoe here. So you see, well, it's actually difficult to see. The track actually starts here, the stop track. You see, it didn't make it too far. If I had turned the locomotive around, then the pickup shoe would be on the back, which means that the locomotive wouldn't stop till you reach uh, here, actually a little further, but if I go a little further, it will actually start driving, right? So if the pickup shoe was here, then it wouldn't stop till over here, and then you see it's positioned differently. So you need to make sure how do you do this. Um, and it's always the pickup shoe that picks up the power and that's basically what stops the locomotive. All right, that was actually uh, quite a lot of wires to uh, make the stop section. However, the principle is actually uh, pretty simple. I got the stop section here. I only made it uh, one track long. Uh, the idea is when this signal is red, there's no power to the center rail on this uh, stop section. If it's green, there's power. Uh, that means when it's red, the locomotive will come driving. It has power out here before the stop section. When it hits the stop section, I also called it stop track in this video, then it will lose power and then it will automatically stop. There are, however, a few things you need to think about. How long should this stop section be? Because you want it to look like uh, when your trains come here that they actually stop in front of the signal, they don't pass the signal. You want to make sure that uh, you kind of has the length adjusted with uh, how fast would you typically drive here. Because if you drive really fast, we saw that it actually glided all the way uh, across uh, the stop section or the stop track here. Uh, if we look at it, uh, it's actually quite a few wires. We have the wire here. Uh, to the M84 for the main signal or the home block signal. We got a wire to the uh, distance signal. You don't need a distance signal to make a stop track. I'm just reusing what we had from uh, the last video, so episode uh, 5G. Then we have a track or a wire here that will be uh, either powered or not powered, the power dependent on the state of the signal. We connect that to the stop section or the stop track here, so that uh, it will give power when the signal is green. Then we have a couple of wires to power the M84. And finally, we have this little wire here that uh, actually uh, is in order to, it is actually the track power or the digital signal. You can take it from anywhere. I took it here from the power to the M84, but it needs to go to the center connector here, so that it will actually come out uh, with the red wire here. Finally, there is a bypass wire here. The bypass wire is to make sure no matter how your layout looks, uh, you will always have power from this side go to this side. So the center rail over here can escape throughout this uh, red wire and go to the center rail on the other side or the vice versa, depending on where you got your central station or mobile station. In that way, you're sure that if one of these is powered, then the other one is also. Now, this wire is strictly speaking not uh, necessary. It's nice if you're building uh, temporary say, uh, set out, uh, sorry, temporary layouts like I do, but strictly speaking, it's, it's not really needed. Because what you could do is you could make sure that from your central station or mobile station, you have several power drops out to several places on your layout uh, item which you should do anyways, and then make sure that all pieces are, are powered. However, it can also be a good trick to have this bypass one. So what is the disadvantage with a stop track or a stop section? Well, you saw um, I used my locomotive here. Uh, when it came over to the stop section, it actually powers off. Now this is actually a sound locomotive and on purpose I didn't run it with sound because the disadvantage is when the locomotive comes here to the uh, stop section or the stop track, 
it will actually stop and have no more power. So the power is cut off. Uh, so it means that you cannot make a prototypical where it comes over here um, it breaks nicely, for example, it might still have engine sound on, it might still have lights on and so on. So that's a disadvantage with stop track. It completely cuts the power. There's no nice braking either. Uh, so that's the disadvantage. However, the advantage is that it's actually relatively simple to do this. So it, it makes it easy uh, to actually uh, make a stop track that way. The other thing you could do with the stop track is you could actually, we, instead of having the stop track in front of the signal, you could put it behind the signal. So if I took the signal and I moved it um, up here, oh, yeah, well, I can't do that. If I had it in front of the stop section, so maybe even way over here, then basically I could use it as a safety such that I myself would be driving the locomotive. When I come close to the signal, I will brake myself. If I forget to brake, I hit the stop section and then it kills the power, right? In that way, I could have a more prototypical approach to the signal. I could stop in front of the signal. I can have sound and light in front of the signal. But if I uh, go past the signal, which I never should do, then there will be a stop track or a stop section with no power uh, such that I won't uh, continue into a potential other train and collide with that. I uh, really do hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed it, uh, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, please remember to subscribe to the channel, hit the little notification bell as well, so that you'll be notified about uh, upcoming videos. And I hope uh, to see you in a future video. Enjoy.